Hello everyone, I'm Dennis and I'm still working on my CPU despite I had a huge break. The reason for that break is that I had no updates. On the last video I started working on the PCB for my ALU, but unfortunately I didn't succeed. That wasn't an easy road and uh, I spent hours and hours uh, fixing my mistakes, redoing my design, trying it and it still doesn't work. But then I realized that probably it worth to show it. Not a success story, but also a fail story could be an interesting one. And I will start with my first fail. My assumption being that I will be able to put an ALU on a single half Euro card size PCB, which is 100 mm to 80 mm. And technically I should be able to do this. Of course, I have a lot of uh, ICs on the board, but still, that's a pretty big board, ICs are relatively small, I can use both sides of the board, so why not? The reason why not being traces. For each binary operation, I need to root two arguments plus a result. 24 bits, 24 traces. Traces take space, and what's even worse, when you have trace, you cannot put the other trace here. You cannot put the VA here. And I've been really limited in my layers. I only have a four layer board. And if I go with say, six layer board, it will be several times more expensive. If I go more than half Euro card, well, okay, I can get two more centimeters. But still, if I go more than 100 millimeters to 100 millimeters, it's like three times more expensive and I need a lot of bores so three times more expensive for one bores means like my CPU will cost like several hundred euros more I can't afford this I had no other option I have too many signals they don't fit this board and my solution being what if I split my ALU into several boards and I've been really lucky with my ALU design for this because my ALU output is an open drain output with a modern design, I will probably have a multiplexer, and multiplexers require everything to be on the same circuit. But here, as I have open drain and I'm just enabling the parts of the CPU and enabling some outputs of the CPU, it makes no difference if I have the whole ALU on a single board or if I have the ALU split into several boards connected to the same bus. And this has been my solution to my first issue. Instead of a single board, I will have a unary op operation board, binary op operation board, and add sub board. In total, three boards, which needs to be tested, which needs to be designed, the circuit needs to be designed, the board itself needs to be designed, and it took like several streams. And additionally, I made a test board, and the test board being just a backplane connector, the receptacle plus pin headers for all the 96 pins on the backplane, all the 96 lanes on the backplane, well with obvious exception for ground and power pins. Additionally, I put a 24 volts to 5 volts DC-DC, because uh, my LEDs will be running on 24 volts and my CPU will be running on 5 volts. And additionally, I put the LEDs on the X-out bus. So my idea being that I will not just be able to test the CPU board separately, but I will also be able to test the other like supporting schematic solution for my CPU. So having those boards, like test board plus ALU boards, I ordered all of them, I ordered the components for them, and when they arrived, I started to assemble the boards. First of all, I started with the test board, that's been pretty fine. But when I started to assemble the ALU boards, I realized that I made a couple of mistakes. And my first mistake being that I forgot uh, that the, the backplane connector has a kind of a step on it, so it needs to be placed precisely on the board edge. And I made it not so precise, so I will not be able to assemble it correctly. And it's been a little bit angled. Okay, it will still work. It will still work, but it's aesthetically unpleasant. I fixed it in the next revision of the board. 
The second thing being even worse. By mistake, while soldering this connector, I remember that, okay, those connectors, they need to be uh, mirrored. But I forgot that I already mirrored the connection on the test board. So by mistake, I soldered the backplane connector on the ALU boards from the opposite side. Twice on two boards. And then I started to test all of them and realized that, okay, my test board doesn't work. Like, well, most of it does work, but some of the less doesn't. And it took some time to find why it doesn't work. Uh, fortunately, it's been just soldering errors. I made a couple of unsoldered pins or incorrectly soldered pins somehow. So I've been able to quickly fix it and then test board worked. And with this test board, I connected my first ALU board and realized that it's short circuited somewhere, which shouldn't happen. It's short circuited when I turn on my test board with an ALU board, my power supply immediately goes into protective protection mode, like limiting the current. Or well, like what was the reason? I don't know. I assembled one more board and realized that for some reason uh, when I try to change the state of the decoder, the board starts to consume too much power. I have no idea why. But what I'm going to do next, I ordered the adapter that will help me to convert from SMD connection to through hole connection and I will be able to rebuild my CPU using the exactly same ICs and I will be able to rebuild my ALU using the exactly same ICs on a breadboard, test it on a breadboard, probably identify issues in my design and remake my design and make it working on a PCB. And I will put the highlights from the streams back to my YouTube during the spring. So thank you and see you in the next video.